so many areas in this house that I have neglected for far too long and it is time to get our hands on them and get it tackled. I've got the comfy clothes on today. We're going to hang out. We're going to clean and we're going to basically try to get it all done. Fingers crossed. But I wanted to share with you guys, I went through the house and I wrote down every little area that I wanted to touch and it was about 20 different things. So I wanted to share with you guys how I'm going to take this fancy 92 cent box of baking soda to reset this house in all of those areas. So I'm really hoping that you'll be able to get some good tips and tricks today on how you can clean your house with a simple box of baking soda. But I did want to ask you guys, how did your weekend go? After six, seven years now, I think, the popcorn maker died on us this weekend, and that was such a bummer because we love our popcorn in this house, so put buying a new popcorn maker on the to-do list. That was really sad, a very sad weekend, but I did want to say that I seen that we had some new subscribers, so I wanted to say hi and welcome to you guys. I'm really glad that you're here. You're basically a part of the club now, so... I'm really glad that you are here and that we'll get to hang out more often. But without further ado, let's jump into it and let's go talk about it. All right, so tip number one, starting in your kitchen sink, I have a ton of hard water stains all over the back of the sink. I've got some stains back here where my sponge caddy hangs out and then I have a big old ring down here around this drain. So here's what you're going to need. We're going to need some white vinegar, baking soda, and essential oil of your choice. This isn't necessary. This is optional, but I did want to put some down the drain to help it smell better. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my sink all wet. And then I'm going to take some baking soda and I'm going to sprinkle it all in the bottom of the sink. I'm going to take my white vinegar and I'm going to get this poured into a bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my sponge, dip it into my white distilled vinegar, and I'm gonna get this sink all scrubbed up. Moving on to tip number two of how you can use baking soda, we are going to clean the microwave. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have lots of splatter all over the sides and the back and up here on the tray. So let's get into it because this is what you're going to need. We're going to start by filling a bowl or a cup, anything that's microwave safe, up with a little bit of water. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of baking soda and get it popped into your microwave for five minutes. We're just going to carefully remove this bowl because it is going to be hot. And then we're going to take our cleaning rag and just give the microwave a good wipe and everything that was stuck on should come right off. On to tip three, you can see that down here in the bottom of the ice tray or the ice platform, I'm not really for sure what we call this. Anyway, one of my biggest pet peeves is that the kids will fill up their cups first and then put it over here to get ice in it. And when they do that, it just splatters all the drink out. So I have a good amount of stained tea down here in this tray. So let's go ahead and jump in and get this tackled. I'm gonna start by taking half of a teaspoon of baking soda and get this sprinkled all over the bottom of this tray. I'm gonna put in a little bit of dish soap at the bottom and just a splash of white vinegar. I'm just gonna go in with an old toothbrush that I used for cleaning and I'm gonna go ahead and get this scrubbed down. On to tip four is I have some mustard that is splattered all on the wall right here behind the trash can. I love the fact that the kids will dump their plates but sometimes it gets a little messy. This one could not be any easier. You just need to take your cleaning rag and get it a little bit damp. Put it into your baking soda to where you can get some on the end of your rag. Tip five is 
stinky trash cans. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys, no embarrassment here. I've got some trash in the bottom of mine and some kind of liquid. I am really not even for sure what that is. Maybe some chocolate milk. But let's go ahead and let's get this trash can moved to the bathtub. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this completely rinsed out. Take some baking soda and sprinkle this all on the inside of the trash can and then add in some soap and give it a good scrub. So that's one less stinky trash can that's trying to grow its own colony in the bottom and one cleaning sponge down. Let's move on to tip six. So, armed with a new sponge and more baking soda, we're staying in the kitchen because baking soda is a great way if you need to deodorize and clean your cutting board. So what I like to do is just get my cutting board wet on both sides, sprinkle on some baking soda and give it a good scrub. seven I have a lot of burnt on food right here on the inside glass part of my oven door so I'm gonna go ahead and get this tackled with some baking soda I'm gonna go back to my bowl of vinegar and I'm gonna get my sponge soaked I go ahead and squeeze it out all over the top of the oven door Then I'm gonna take my baking soda and sprinkle this all over the top of the vinegar You could cover yours with a dish towel, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cover mine with some paper towels and let this set for about 30 minutes. Okay, after 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and pull all these paper towels back and just get this cleaned up. Tip number eight with your baking soda is that baking soda makes a really great mild soaking water for any kind of toys, especially for little kids. Over the weekend, my daughter and I went to a yard sale and she found her some poppets there, but you know, not knowing who had them first and what kind of germs may be on them, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let them soak in some baking soda. So what you're gonna need to do first, go ahead and get your sink filled up with really warm water. Then add in one tablespoon of baking soda, give it a nice mix, and pop whatever toys that you're looking to disinfect into the water. Let them soak for about an hour, rinse them, and let them dry. Tip number nine, hair brushes. So I know sometimes our hair brushes can get really nasty, they can get hair caught in them and you can't easily get it out. So here's how you can clean your hair brushes with baking soda. The first thing that I do is I take a large bowl and fill it up with really hot water. I take one tablespoon of baking soda, add in some dish soap, and the last thing that I like to add is a few drops of tea tree oil. This isn't necessary, but tea tree oil is really great at fighting off lice. And if you're a mama, you know that that is one of the big major battles when it comes to having school-aged kiddos. So anything that I can do to help prevent it, I'm gonna take those extra steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few drops of this into my water. Then I'm just gonna take my brushes and get them dipped into the water and let them soak for about an hour. Then I'll rinse them, clean them, and let them dry. Moving on to tip number 10 when it comes to your baking soda, my three-year-old nephew, who is one excellent artist, likes to showcase his artwork in some very unusual places. So let's talk about baking soda and crayons. Go ahead and dip your cleaning rag into some baking soda and go ahead and just give it a wipe. On to tip number 11 with your baking soda. I don't know about you guys, but we spend a lot of time at the lake and in the pool. And with that comes sunscreen, tanning lotion, pool chemicals, you name it. So every now and then I like to take all of our bathing suits and our towels and I like to get them a good strip in the washer to remove all of those oils, all of those chemicals. So let me show you how I do it. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one fourth cup of baking soda and sprinkle that into the bottom of my washer. 
plain white vinegar and pour it into the fabric softener container of my washer. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything added. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of Dawn and I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit into that on top of the clothes. And I'm gonna run this on the hottest setting possible for an extra rinse. And go ahead and get this started. Moving on to number 12, baking soda is really great at deodorizing your toilet. So let's go ahead and get it cleaned. I like to sprinkle in a little bit of baking soda into the bottom of the bowl, add a little bit of Dawn, and then just give it a scrub. On to tip number 13 and continuing in the bathroom. Baking soda is really good at scrubbing the inside of your shower walls and your shower floor to get rid of any kind of soap scum and build up. I have a lot of conditioner that is splattered on the side of my shower wall. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the floor of my shower wet and get some baking soda sprinkled onto it. I'm gonna add some more Dawn. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna take my new sponge and give this a scrub. On to number 14 and one of my favorites with baking soda. If you have boys in your life or even pets, then you know right here around the bottom of the toilet can get nasty and smelly. So here's what I like to do to get rid of all of the urine smell. I like to take my baking soda and sprinkle some around the edge of the toilet. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Dawn. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take some essential oils. Any smell, your preference will work. And then I like to put some of that around the bottom as well. I'm just gonna take my wet sponge and give this a really good scrub. On to number 15, what about cleaning the inside of your washing machine? I'm gonna take 1 4 cup of baking soda and two tablespoons of Dawn and I'm gonna get this mixed together until it makes a paste. After I have it mixed into a paste, I'm gonna put a little bit of it on my cleaning rag and I'm gonna scrub the inside of my drum and I'm also gonna wipe down the agitator. Now that I have it all wiped down, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a rinse a few times with some water and then leave the lid open and let it air dry. On to number 16, baking soda is really good at deodorizing your rugs or your carpet. Just go ahead and sprinkle it onto your carpet let it set for 30 minutes and then vacuum it up. Moving on to number 17, making your own Febreze spray with baking soda. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start by adding one tablespoon of baking soda. Then I'm gonna go in with three tablespoons of fabric softener. Any fabric softener will work, your choice. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottle and get the rest of it filled up with hot water from the sink and give it a shake. Moving on to number 18, the paste that we made earlier for the washer works really good outside on all of your patio furniture. Works really good too to get off any kind of mildew smells that are maybe on your pool floats from storage. Moving on to number 19, we tend to get a lot of ant piles outside around the pool so an easy solution to that is to sprinkle on some baking soda, add some vinegar, give it a few days and repeat if necessary. Number 20 and the final tip on using baking soda is to make up some mop water. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with 1 fourth of a cup of baking soda, 1 fourth cup of white vinegar, and then one tablespoon of Dawn. We basically got it all done and that was a lot of checks off of the to-do list per usual as you guys know. I feel like I touched every surface of this house today and I made it through an entire box of baking soda in the process. 
I want to say thank you to you guys for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I had a blast with you guys as always. And I'm hoping that you found one of these tips and tricks useful today. And if there's something that you do differently with baking soda that I didn't cover today, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. But I will have all of these typed out in the description box below in case you need to reference back for anything. But until next time, I'll see you later, friends.